I'm going to be talking to you about levonotation, and by the end of my speech, you're going to be able to analyze any physical action and adjust yourself accordingly to make yourself more physically um, successful when you communicate. So, could I quickly have everyone introduce yourself to one of your classmates? Hi. 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 All right, that's good. Now, by show of hands, how many of you use a physical action when you're introducing yourself? Whether you shook your hand, smiled, waved, nodded. Probably all of you, unless you're very, you know, closed off. So, um, that's what I thought most of you. So, according to Dr. Moravian, a leading social psychologist, more than 55% of all non of all communication is nonverbal, meaning that more than half of what is communicated is not what's said, but what's done physically. Now, I'm going to tell you how to um, analyze that 55% of communication using my three main points. The first point being Lebon's effort factors. I'm going to define Lebon notation and the three effort factors involved in analyzing physical motion. My next point is Lebon's effort action. I'll define the eight different actions and then give you a demonstration using me as an artifact for the eight different actions there. And then my last point is Lebon's neutral. I'll define Lebon's neutral and give you a practical application in giving speeches. So hopefully you'll be able, I'll be able to use that. Now that we've gone over my um, three main points, let's go further into Lebon's effort factors. So according to Karen Brad, the author of Rudolf Lebon, the bonitation is a theory of movement developed by Rudolf Lebon that states any physical action can be analyzed and then broken down using three factors into eight different categories, or the eight different actions. Now the first factor is weight. Now weight is the way that is the role that gravity plays on a situation, so that can either be light or heavy. The next factor is space. Space is the way a person moves in an area, and that can be either direct or indirect. And the final factor is time. Time is obviously the role that time plays on, on an action. And that can either be sudden or sustained. Sustained meaning that time is not a factor at all. So now that we've gone over um, the three different factors involved, I'm going to use myself to show you the eight different effort actions. So the first, so according to, um, according to Doug Anderson, author of, uh, sorry, Doug Anderson, author of Love Annotation, each of the actions corresponds to one aspect of the three different factors. So the first action is dab. Dab is light, direct, and sudden. You can think of your butler. He's very proper, very upright. He has his goals. One, two, three, moves on. One, two, three. The next action is um, float. Float is light, direct, and sustained. You can think of your ghost floating across the um, graveyard. He's flying one area to the next. Doesn't matter how long it takes him to get there, just as long as he gets to his point. The third effort action is flick. Flick is light, di um, indirect, and sudden. That's going to be your jester, your court jester that's juggling and shooting fire out, you know, very sporadic actions. So you're your um, class, your prankster. Um, the fourth, or yes, the fourth action is glide. Glide is light, sustained, and di indirect. That's going to be your fairy godmother, floating this way and that way, granting wishes to any little princess who may cross her path. Um, the fifth action is punch. Punch is heavy, direct, and sudden. That's going to be your boxer, obviously. The weight's planted, then you have your one target, and the very fast, fast motions. That's your punch. The next is press. Press is heavy, direct, sustained. That's going to be your interrogator, who is going to get the target, one target, then getting the information out of him any way you can. Very determined. <laughs> Understand? Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, the sixth, the eighth, seventh effort action is slash. Slash is heavy, indirect, and sudden. That's going to be your very irritable or crabby person who's like, "What do you want? Stop! Just, just, just get away!" <laughs> very sudden motions. You don't know how they're going to react to certain situations. And the final effort action is ring. Ring is heavy, indirect, and sustained. That's a very internalized, very uh, emotional person who doesn't know how to react, who doesn't know how to express themselves, something like that. So now that I've told you about LeBon's eight different effort actions, let's move on to LeBon's neutral. Now, according to Dalby, um, uh, Dalby and Lowe, authors of LeBon for All, LeBon, um, LeBon's neutral is the point where no effort action is portrayed. So where you don't see any of the eight different actions that I just showed you in any motion. Now to find that, you have to find the neutral of each of the three factors. So that's why it's in between each of the factors, as I said. So to find the neutral of weight, it's going to be between light and heavy, 
that's in between your toes and your heels, so that's on the balls of your feet. You're still planted, but you're able to maneuver. Now the neutral of space is in between direct and indirect, more towards direct where you're able to focus, but you're still aware of what's going on around you. And finally, the neutral of um, time is in between suddenness and stay. More towards sustained, you're able to concentrate on one thing for a prolonged period of time, but if something suddenly arises, you can deal with that quickly and then come back. Now, a practical application would be for giving a speech. So once you find the bonds neutral, like this man, or for me, for example, you're relaxed, you have a good posture, and then you can choose any of the different actions that you want to use. So for this speech, I chose to do dab, so a little here, and then press. So dab where I can go from one point to the next, but press where I can get my information across to you, diligently and um, with a lot of confidence, hopefully. <laughs> um, now that I've told you about Lebon's neutral, let me summarize some of the main points for you. Remember that more than half of what's commun being communicated is not what's being said, but what's being done physically. Also remember that you can analyze that physical mu movement based on the three factors, and then categorize that into the eight different actions. And finally, after finding Lebon's neutral, you can choose which of the best actions to use to make yourself more successful. So I hope that you guys take what I uh, told you today, find Lebon's neutral, make yourself 55% more, more successful in your communications. Thank you. Closed your eyes at some point, you lost the audience contact, and sometimes, like, you fixed it during the end, but your posture started like this, okay. but then it went back to normal. So, other than that, it's great. Well, that was a really awesome presentation. I love that you were able to, like, really get into it and use your space. It was really enthusiastic. I really liked that. Um, really, the only constructive thing I have is, like, you were looking at your cards a lot and visiting with them. But I get a lot of information in there, so <laughs> maybe you probably have to have cards, but oh, that was really, really good. Thank you. Um, I thought you did an excellent job. I liked your opening where you had us interact, and then we got interested, and then your artifact <coughs> where you explained everything. The only thing, I really couldn't find anything wrong again, but I guess you went over time, but it's not my best, man. That's by the worst time I have so far that time. <coughs> um, thank you very much. Time. Six minutes, thirty-one seconds.